Um, hi, everyone. My name is Joey Katz. I'm the program associate with Boston Jewish Film. And thank you all for joining us this evening for tonight's uh, live Q&A with two of the filmmakers from our Shorts in Quarantine program. Um, we did have a third, um, Manya Lozovskaya. I hope if, if, if she's out there listening, I hope I didn't butcher her last name too much. Um, but she was the director for Voices from the Balconies. She couldn't attend tonight. Um, so we are here, though, with uh, two of the filmmakers. Uh, we have Asaf Polanski, from, uh, who directed Long Distance, and Alex Fabry, who directed Dialogues and Monologues. Uh, welcome, both of you. Um, I'm going to read your bios, if you don't mind. So. Uh, so we're going to start here with uh, Alex. Uh, Alex is an East Coast-based filmmaker intrigued by the strange decisions people make and the often stranger motivations behind those decisions. Um, Asaf Polanski is an Israeli-American writer-director. Uh, his debut feature, One Week in a Day, which we showed uh, back in 2016. So uh, a, a welcome back to you. Um, premiered at Cannes Film Festival. The film was nominated for seven Israeli Academy Awards and won uh, Best Supporting Actor. Um, he, uh, recently, he directed the first season of the new TV show, Traitor. Um, so yeah, As uh, Asaf and Alex, welcome both of you. We're really happy to have you here. Thanks for having. Thank you, yeah, great to be here. Yeah, so... Um, since this is the, you guys both have uh, your films in the Shorts and Quarantine program. Um, so we're gonna, you know, we're not gonna get too heavy here with the subject matter, but we're gonna kind of keep it in that, in that area of um, the last year and a half, basically. Um, but um, we both kind of tackle very different aspects of human relationships, but they're very similar in their ways. Um, I think one of the things that I found from watching both of your films um, is kind of the the fragility of human relationships, whether they're familial or romantic. Um, and you know, um, Alex, you kind of, the thing that's interesting about your film, Alex, is that it, it ends in December 2019. So it's it's not explicitly a COVID centric film, but it's you know watching it now and watching it um it's it's hard to kind of escape um mm -hmm. and a softier film is very directly <laughs> in in the kind of under the shadow of of covid so um i guess the first question is if you could speak to kind of how you went about making those relationships uh putting those relationships on screen and kind of talking about fragility if you could um, I guess, uh, Asaf, if you want to start. Um, so how, so just can, the question is, how did I put the, those relationships on screen and. Yeah, um, and just to talk about like kind of the fragility of those re relationships. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, I was always interested in, I wanted to always make something about a long distance relationship. It's something that I have unfortunately a lot of experience with and, and actually a lot of people in my family do as well. Um, and my grandmother says that she blames my grandfather for really giving that to everyone to follow through. And, um, and I, you know, and I was really thinking about it a lot and then, um, but didn't really know how to tackle it yet. And then when COVID hit, um, the short that I made, Long distance. It's, so it's part of a, a larger group of shorts that was commissioned um, in Israel by the cable company, and they're like, "We everything shut down, the whole industry shut down. We want to do a few quick shorts, and if you have an idea." And then suddenly, that's where I was like, "Well, I can." I, I just was in a long distance just before COVID, and, and I flew back to to my wife um, when COVID hit. I was in Israel and flew to LA, and I thought that. You know, in a way, this conversation could could happen without COVID, but really, to me, COVID was really magnifying. And there's like we have to now deal with it, and kind of the whole essence of um, just life is too short. And I think what to me was it was really I I, I wanted to put it in, in the, just when started. Like it, there's even a date there where it's like mid March of mm -hmm. 2020, and 
you know, I thought that for, I just kind of was trying to look at how you can tell the story in like a very short amount of time, but keep it in, in, in real time and see how you can kind of slowly but very quickly just unfold everything that they've been holding. And really, this is the moment where there's there's really no reason to to keep um, bullshitting, for lack of a better word. Yeah. And and so that's you know, and then with, and you really can't escape like just how we are right now, just on Zoom. There's kind of like you're confronted suddenly in this kind of situation. So yeah, that's kind you know, and and really, I, I was just looking at these two. I was because we did it, the two actors never met while we did it. So it's kind of, I needed to find people that had some chemistry before. So they did do this one shoot before, but just kind of being able to feel that being a, a real couple. Um, and I was just, yeah, I was just trying to go to like this, this thing where like, we, yeah, you can't really, you have to confront what's going on right now. And I thought that the pandemic is a good reason to do that. Interesting. Um, Alex? Yeah. Um, well, I guess the relationship that I was portraying in my documentary is one that I'm like pretty familiar with, considering the subjects are my my grandmother and my great aunt. So, mm -hmm. in in the process of making the film, I think my focus was just to kind of like capture them as I see them and. Um, both like the endearing elements of them and the elements that I find funny, the elements that I think um, reveal a little bit more of who they are. So I, I tried to like not change the way they act. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I felt it was important for my presence to like be felt but not impact um, the actions that they were taking. Um, and then in terms of like showing their relationship, I guess I didn't have to think too hard about it. It, it, it kind of just like, it, it was there, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. They've, they've known each other for so long, 80 years. Um, and that's sort of the point of the, of the movie. Mm -hmm. And so it was able to happen like very naturally. A, a lot happened that I didn't even expect, um, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool. Well, like, what's an example? Like, like, like what? Sure. So, I mean, when I started, when I, when I started making the documentary, part of it was just like, I, I have these people, I'd like to um, sort of take their stories and just like have them, you know, forever, whatever forever means in terms of like digital media. Maybe it really does mean forever. Um, and I, you know, they've been through a lot. Um, their history growing up. In, in Europe, surviving the Holocaust, et cetera. So just like documenting that and having that for me and my family was important. And I kind of set out to make a movie about like, oh, they're sisters, like it's it's great, it's, it's cool, like they love each other. And in the process of filming, I sort of realized that the, the sort of little tiffs that I would see or like the arguments that I would, I would see when we would spend time together sort of went a little bit deeper. So in a sense, like the whole movie kind of was unexpected because I thought I was going to make like a four minute video about how it's great, like they love each other and that's that. Um, yeah, so it all kind of like came out of nowhere in a really positive way. Hmm. Uh, I, I think the two things about your film, both of your films are, um, I think they're very intimate films in their own unique ways um but i mean i think it's interesting where whereas you know asaf you, you're it's a fictional relationship but it feels very real and alex it's a, a real relationship but um i mean there are some things as alex you learned like there are things that you were kind of surprised by but to kind of delve into those very personal aspects of whether it's a fictional relationship or a real relationship, I feel like requires a lot of trust um, from to be uh, kind of dealt in the director's hands. But I was wondering how, how, what was that process of kind of gaining your subjects or actors trust? I mean, there are certainly very revealing things that happen 
in your film, Asaf, and there are things that are revealed, <laughs> Alex, in your film. So if you could talk about that kind of process of gaining your subject and actor's trust. Um, Alex, I guess we'll go first. If that's sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty interesting because I think uh, both my grandma Ava and Vera going into the film also kind of expected it to just be sort of like me documenting things that happened. Um, there's a moment in the movie where I, I th maybe like a third of the way into the film where they really have like their first big argument. Um, they are talking about they're uh, bringing up the past, like my, my grandmother's marriage and how my great aunt spent a lot of time with her ex-husband because with, with my grandmother's ex-husband because he was the cousin of my great aunt's husband. It's a very complex mm -hmm. tree. But after all of that happened, my grandma turned to me and she was like, delete it. Like, I don't, I don't need, <laughs> like, we don't need that. We don't need that to happen. <laughs> and I knew that it was fantastic. I knew like that was sort of a turning point where I was like, okay, this is going to be a movie that can like actually say something and reveal something. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, like capturing it and then eventually like having a film and showing it to the two of them and to, to my family and, you know, people, of course, but to the two of them, I think it um, was really positive. And so in terms of trust, I think there was always like an understanding that I wasn't going to embarrass them. You know, I wasn't like setting out to, 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 make a gotcha film or to show something that like is horrible. But at the same time, I was trying to show, show what's real in their relationship. And ultimately like there's a happy ending in the film. And like to this day, both of them, anytime I see them, they're like, when you made the movie, like it changed everything. And so wow. um, there's like a really positive element to that. Yeah. Wow, it's fantastic. Um, Asaf, the question goes to you. <laughs> Yeah, I had to put a lot of trust in both the actors, first of all, because um, well, when we just started, I, I just, the script was slightly different and I had a lot of conversations with them just about, you know, relationships and, and all that. And I think I put some of that in and, and, but really once we started making the film, because the way that it was made was they weren't only the actors, they were the crew. They, I mean, they shot it basically with a the Zoom. They have to make sure that it's recording. They suddenly became like, you know, makeup and costume and everything. And we put so much on them. And then, and then like, they also like, oh, they also have to act. And because it was really during quarantine where no one could be around them. Um, and, you know, we did this, we did rehearsals and everything, but it's done in, in, in one take. So there's no editing in it. And really just, I kind of knew that once we start, doesn't, you know, it's, it, it's almost like a play and they have to go from beginning to end. And really, so there, there, I, for me, there was like, I was, there, there are two actors that I know, Tomer I knew very well, Neve I knew a little, um, but started to get to know her. And I just kind of was like, all right, we can just rehearse it as much as we can, but now it's really, it's, it's up to you. And I was, I was a third party just watching what was going on. Um, so there was, I think on one hand, there's definitely trust that you just, you know, just as, as collaborators, but here I felt there was like an, an dish that I really feel like is the three of us made the movie together. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it was kind of, it was an interesting part. It was a very different process. I mean, I, I, I don't know if any of us would, I know the actors were like, we're good with only one time doing more than acting. And, but, um, but it was definitely a different experience and really putting a lot more trust on than usually I, I felt um, on them. Hmm. Um, I, I guess going off of that, um, kind of the decision to make a film through Zoom. I mean, yeah. there there have been so many, and very few do it well. Um, I think your film does it incredibly well. Um, there's another film in this program mm -hmm. that that uses Zoom for comedic effect, um, but if you could talk about arriving at the decision to make a film through Zoom, the uncertainty, if any, of deciding mm -hmm. to make that film, um, yeah. and just 
the process of directing. You said it, a lot of scenes were basically one take, but what is that process like? And kind of how did you get to the decision to be comfortable enough to be like, oh, we're going to make a Zoom film or film in Zoom? Yeah. Right. I mean, I thought when it, because we, we started pretty early to make it. I mean, we, we, I think we filmed it in May, end of May of 2020, but there was definitely already some Zoom content. And, and my one understanding was I don't want to do any editing in it because I felt that always felt more manipulating. And I felt that there's something where you're stuck in a Zoom call and just that of, you know, there's, we've at this point, at that point, everyone has been on, on a few Zoom calls at least, and we all know that experience. Mm -hmm. So it kind of was, it became this challenge of really, there, I mean, the whole, we, we, it goes for 15 minutes and we never cut. And we shot it over a few days and we, and we started, it was the first time we did, it was 25 minutes. And between the three days that we did it, I kept on rewriting because I understood like the pace of it. And it has to, on one hand, be entertaining, but also, but we have to make it feel real. So, I mean, the, the decision to make it on Zoom was very quick because I was like, okay, the, we, the budget is nothing basically. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it has to be about COVID and I want to do a long distance. And it just felt like the right thing to do. Um, but it, it was an extremely, like at, at when, when I brought it, because I brought it to the, produ the producers that were doing it, like, oh, this is going to be the easy one we have to do from all the ones that are commissioned. And it actually became... I spent about a week and a half with this technical advisor that we just, because suddenly we're, we're doing all these things we never thought about, like changing her phone and getting better internet for her and, you know, and all these things to make it go well. And I can tell you on the second take that we did, I'm, I'm in LA, they're, they're in Israel, in each in their own houses, and, and suddenly my internet stops working. And so, that, so, so, so the take just, they kept on going, but I couldn't tell them, like, I mean, I had to wait so I told them, and you just have to kind of pray that everything goes well, including the internet. And um, we were so, and somehow, you know, and, and I think on the last one, it, it just all clicked, but that's really kind of in a way, this thing where it, it was, it was exciting because you kind of know once you launch, then you have to see it all the way through. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, if that answers the question, hopefully. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. um, I just, I, <laughs> There, I just feel so much anxiety of not even being there, but knowing that something's <laughs> happening and you really can't do anything about it. Um, I, I, you're a very strong-willed person for having to put up with that. Um, but uh, Alex, I know as as we mentioned earlier, the the last part of your film is in December of 2019, and you know things didn't really fully unravel until about March ish but mm -hmm. was there were, were you kind of keeping your ear open for kind of COVID news and if so how did that kind of inform the way that you were filming the the last part of the film um yeah you know I don't think so I if I remember correctly I think it was in January when I first started to follow or sort of started to hear about the news it's kind of eerie to think about like december of 2019 and and not and and recognize that i wasn't thinking about this and in some ways obviously it doesn't impact the film but it makes for me like those moments a little bit more powerful so it's interesting yeah, absolutely. But, absolutely yeah i definitely wasn't wasn't really aware yeah, well, I mean, going off of that, um, you were editing it in, in 2020. And I mean, yes. rewatching watching the film and then rewatching it on my part, the it it really, you know, going back to the first question about the fragility of relationships, but the importance of human relationships, like everything is really magnified in the film. And it's already very <laughs> intense and emotional. But yeah. when, when you were editing the film, what were were all these things kind of being revealed to you like what was that whole process like sure well I think the editing like completing the movie was the first thing that I did when we had to like lock down in March it was kind of like priority number one because I had shot some of the movie like basically a year before and 
I start to get antsy when I have like a project that's been going on for a long time. So I was like, okay, we have a couple weeks where we have to do this thing. Like, let me just finish finish the movie. Um, so in terms of like time frame, it was like very early on, but I guess there probably maybe subconsciously was like a magnification of the importance of, of those relationships and the importance of like long-term relationships that maybe I didn't think about at the time. Um, and it was also like a little bit before, I think we recognized that it was going to be such an ongoing problem. But I remember in the spring, like how people were like both a uh, anxious and nervous and also sort of like um, treasuring what they, what they had and, and, and taking stock of like the good elements of their life. And so in editing the movie, I mean, all I can feel is like great happiness for like capturing what I captured and also for like um, making a movie that, you know, people say like, oh, I want to make a movie that can have an impact. And I don't necessarily think this is a movie that like can have an impact, but at the same time, I hear, like I said, from these people who I see quite frequently, like all the time that it did have an impact on them. So it's cool to be like, okay, at a time when people were thinking about the one, the, the people they love, I was editing this movie and all in all, it like led to this sort of um, significant uh, bolstering of a relationship and like a re, um, a reset maybe is, I, I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, and like, a, yeah, like a greater appreciation for each other too, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, for Asaf, I mean, you were filming this during COVID obviously, but I think, yeah, one of the things about that first year is that we all, not we all thought, but a, a lot of people thought we would be, you know, out by the summer or something, you know, like uh, kind of looking back on it now, we're still in it. We're not out right. of it yet. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I, it is important to let, you know, our audience and people know that we are not out of this yet. We, you know, I'm fairly certain that we have a, a, a strong vaccination rate amongst our audience, but you know, we're, we're not out of the water yet, but um, right. so be safe. Um, but looking back on the film now, like what was, what was your, mindset did you think this would be kind of a, a flash in the pan kind of moment in time where we would be out by the summer and kind of looking back on it now what have you kind of well yeah we'll stop we'll stop there yeah <laughs> um I wasn't I mean for me it was just a kind of a reaction to what was happening you know I was like I, I was I was about to do this tv show we got stopped a few days before and there, and there was this uncertainty like everyone else in the world. And, uh, and about a month or so later, I, they were like, hey, do you want to make this short? And I was like, and it has to be about COVID. And, and for me, I've, I've never done anything that was reacting to something that was happening at that moment. And, you know, and, and, and that's really what it was. And I think we can't, like, the, the what, not the only thing, but a big thing that was important to me is like, I wanted to put the date in. Because I felt like that date of that week when, you know, we, we were thinking the worst things that could happen. And depending who you are, right? And really, I think um, Gil, the guy, is, is much more kind of, he's, he's more afraid of what's going on than, than, than Nira. And I just kind of wanted to give that, you know, this is what, how it was then. Um, and, and I think, you know, if anyone watches it and, and now or, I mean, things have definitely changed and, it's, and maybe in two years from now, it, it will be like something that like, oh, this, this is something that, that was. But again, I think for me, it was like, really it is about a relationship and how, you know, that time was really when they just had to, to move forward. Um, so yeah, it was just more kind of just like a reaction and what I was seeing was going around and, and, uh, and something that I could definitely also relate to. So, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, so we are starting to get some questions in from our audience. Um, a reminder to everyone, uh, there is a Q&A section, little button at the bottom middle of the screen. So 
submit your uh, questions for Asaf and Alex down there. Um, we have a question from Mary, uh, a two-parter. Um, so Alex, you've, you've touched on this, but a, a little bit, I think they just want a little bit more um, information about this. Um, so what, what has been your family's reaction to the film? Um, I'll let you answer that. Um, and then I'll, I'll follow up with the second part. Sure. Um, yeah, it's been very positive. Um, I think, first of all, people like my, my family, I think is just happy to have a movie about um, my grandma and great aunt, just as something that can like exist. Um, and I think there's been a positive response or I think part of the positive response is ha, has has been that it is pretty accurate and it feels like really familiar to watch in a way that's exciting. And uh, just like an anecdote that I'll drop in, um, I was visiting my grandma recently and I just had like a little camera with me and I just was filming her in her apartment. She was making some food and I realized like all of her actions were the actions that I had already captured in the documentary and it was like kind of a surreal moment because I, I i it wasn't even deja vu it was like this moment of almost relief because i i just felt like okay i got it like i really got it so i think that um, maybe is like indicative of the, the response there's also been just like pe pe uh my family just enjoys it they find it <laughs> funny and, and and emotional so uh, yeah it's been really good and the two of them are, are thrilled by it. That's great. I, I guess going off of that, before we get to the next part of the question, I have a question because, um, because, you know, I can uh, going off of that kind of sense of deja vu. Is it, is it? Do you find it hard to kind of separate the film from your relationship with them? Because I mean, like you were in that position of the director, and now you're, you know, back to being just part of the family and like the is there any kind of weird feeling kind of going back into that position of just being another like a family member like um there there isn't exactly like a weird feeling I think the first maybe first or second time I saw them after making the film and showing it to them mm -hmm. it did it did there wasn't like any sort of feeling of oh I I like captured this or like I took this um or like I was this foreign observer who came and like yeah took something away but I did feel um or it, there was just like its presence was was relevant I don't exactly know how to characterize it but no it has it if anything it's only been like positive um yeah okay great um so the second part of that question is for both of you um uh, Mary wants to know if um, bo uh, both of your films have traveled on a festival circuit, whether virtually or in person, and in, if they have traveled in person, what's that experience been like? Um, whoever wants to go first on that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll just say, I mean, uh, the short, yeah, it's traveled a bit. Um, it's been in a few festivals in in Europe, um, but um, yeah, everything has been virtual. So, and actually this is the first, I think the first Q and A I'm doing for it. So okay. that's really, yeah. Okay, well, glad, glad <laughs> you're the first. There's <laughs> <laughs> so many more. Yeah. Um, and Alex. Um, yeah, this is the first festival that the film has been a part of, which is like pretty exciting. Um, not only just to have it be in a festival, but also to be like the Boston festival being from um, the Boston area. That's that's like pretty cool. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. <laughs> I didn't expect those answers. So um, I'm like, ooh, I'm blushing, but. <laughs> um, but um, I know Alex, you had a question for Asaf. Yeah. You wanna throw that at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in um, the cat background. I wanted to know more because mm. <laughs> I, I thought it was, I thought it was hilarious and was like really kind of working on a couple of different levels. Thanks. Um, 
I knew I wanted to have him on a computer and, and her on, on the phone and just kind of have that first of all that just them being different and I was like you know they're all they're they're high she, she's hiding I would say more than he is and I thought you know as I, I was doing these zoom calls with like we all were like there's certain you know there's people that put that background and I thought it would be a nice opportunity to you know him feeling there's something that's been hidden from him and he has to request it a few times until eventually and then suddenly it feels literally so naked that that background isn't there anymore and Mm -hmm. originally i was i I wanted to have a photo of the two of them which kind of was i think the obvious thing to go for and 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 because they were already on a shoot together i asked them to send me photos but all of them looked like actors on set so so i started just thinking about uh, yes animals you know and like if they had like you know just like a if they had, uh, maybe they had a cat or something like that. And, and I found this photo of a cat of a friend of mine, which I was just like, hey, try this one out. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we did different takes and there's another take where it's, it's a different photo, but somehow that one was always, that was the best. And, I, and um, yeah, it was just kind of like uh, um, something, it was, I think it felt fun to play with, just like this added layer that we can do that is very Zoom unique, um, yeah. Right. Absolutely. It's like there are such a there's such a limited amount of things in terms of like the actual technology that you can utilize to tell the story and to do it, to, to use that. It, it feels like pretty ubiquitous, but it has like a certain impact that I think wouldn't be felt if the background wasn't there. It, right. And, and, and also it helped us because she was supposedly in New York. We were shooting it in Tel Aviv. <laughs> and that's really what I think that was part of what I started. Like, how are we going to hide? This Tel Aviv apartment, <laughs> and, sure. and that's really kind of was like, and you know, from that, not just thinking like, you know, going back. So just kind of even, from, and that was the the genesis of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I do have know. a second question for us. Oh, of course. Hey, that's, you're you're yeah. doing great with the moderator hat here. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, you were kind of talking about how, like, when a take would start, you just have to let it roll. Um, yeah. And I wa- first of all. I, I don't really know how to use Zoom very well. Like, I, I guess I'm a lucky one. I, I haven't had to have too many Zoom conferences. So like, were you on the call with them or did you have to just say like, go and do it and I'll watch back? No, I, I was on the call. I, there was like, I, I, I had this week of like learning everything you can do and can't do with Zoom. Mm-hmm. And I was, um, I was a third party that, you, that was just only watching. Okay. And so I was there with them. And basically the way it was done is I was recording my own computer screen. Mm-hmm. So that was the footage was my, my computer screen. Yeah. Um, but I, no, I was watching them, but I didn't, I never stopped them once, once they started going. Yeah. Sure. And so if there was a take that you knew halfway through, like it, it just didn't feel right. Uh, is there a re- like, did you just want them to kind of like do it? You didn't want to interrupt? I, I don't think I, I don't think I stopped them. And there were definitely takes where you're like, okay, this most likely is not good. I can already feel it, but I felt that it's, if anything, it's a rehearsal and mm-hmm. it'll help us get to that right take. Um, cause we, I only did rehearsals with each of them separately and then only started with them when, when we were literally filming. So if right. anything, it was just like, oh, we're just doing another rehearsal and, and, I don't think I stopped them. Yeah. Right. Great. Asaf, do you have any questions for Alex? I mean, as long as we're, we're tossing <laughs> the moderator hat around, I just want to make I, sure. I mean, I, 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 the thing is that I, I didn't get to, to watch this right, and I feel terrible right now that I, but I, I, I'm going to ask. Well, my question is, can I get? I'm going to watch it, and then I'm going to send it my own e- questions and email that would just be between the two of us. So. <laughs> Absolutely, that's great. <laughs> great. All right. <laughs> That's as exclusive of a Q&A as you can get right there. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Um, great. Um, love it. Um, so we have one more question uh, from our audience. Uh, we have a question from Susan who asks uh, for both of you, um, what's next? What are you guys working on? Um, and where else will these films be screened? So uh, Alex, if you want to start there. Sure. Um, what's next for me? Um, I have a short in post production right now um, called Card Shark. It's about a negotiation over a baseball card, um, and hopefully it will be finished in the winter. 
Um, additionally, like I work as an editor and I have a number of projects that just are always being being worked on. So I have a lot I have a lot in the background, which which is pretty pretty cool. Um, and then in terms of dialogues and monologues, um, well, as of now, this is the one and only uh, festival. This is uh, pretty special. So that's cool. I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Okay. Well, if there's anyone, progr any programmers in attendance, you know, get on it. You know, it's a great film. <laughs> um, and it's off. Um, so in terms of long distance, I don't know right now. Maybe, I mean, we'll see. Um, if it'll, there's not, nothing planned right now for an, another uh, festival that I know of. Um, and in terms of other projects, so um, I've been working on a feature in, in the States for quite a while and uh, moving forward on it and, and hoping to shoot it uh, next year. That's the plan. Um, so I'm going to knock on wood. And, uh, and then also just been working on just wrapping up the show that we eventually got to shoot during COVID and, and been writing um, another film in Israel. So just kind of been bouncing back and forth between the two places as, as much as I can um and writing stuff and hopefully shooting them soon yeah. great um i actually have a question based off of those answers um so your experience filming and editing films during covid how how has that experience kind of informed how you make you've made your kind of follow-ups whether it's the tv show or the uh the short that you're working on alex um asaf i'll i'll throw it to you first um we, well, I did a whole TV show in Israel during COVID, um, and it's, I can't say that, I mean, it's, I'm, I felt very lucky that I got to, to do something when, when everything was shutting down, um, but it, it definitely made us think a lot more on, you know, because we, there's definitely, we were more limited, just even with extras and everything, and we're, and, you know, we're shooting scenes, and in the background, you can see people with masks, and we're trying not to have that, and, and I think that's going to be an ongoing thing, really. Like for me, I was like, are we just, when are we going to start incorporating stories where they're just where, where we're living right now? You know, and, and I don't, and I don't have, I, and I don't know if anyone wants to see that much more, you know, because just we've been living all that. Um, but I don't really, I mean, I, I've just been trying to, to, I don't know, to tell the same, I mean, just continue what I was doing even before COVID because um, it's such long processes to, to develop stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have a smart answer. Uh, just, we were just trying to keep, stay to safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate so. an honest answer. It's better than yeah. a smart one. So, <laughs> um, it's a good answer too. Um, Alex. Yeah, I think, well, uh, we filmed the short that is in post right now. We filmed it in August, okay. um, and it felt like just fantastic to, to be to be filming something it was a small crew small cast um, one location really simple um, but I don't think that is something that changed because of COVID I think like right now I'm pretty interested in filmmaking that is like um, not too extravagant um, I mm -hmm. feel like focused on trying to tell the best story with um, sort of like limitations and without uh, without looking for too much to sort of aid the narrative. But in terms of editing, um, recently it's been like really great to be able to edit with my directors, um, to have them come in and like sit and instead of working um, remotely and like exchanging notes by email or like having sessions on Zoom to talk. Um, and like, not only is it just better and like, makes things go faster but I just feel like I really appreciate it now um, mm -hmm. maybe more so than I did before um, I guess it's kind of a reminder that like collaboration in person really like regardless can't be beat I th this can even tie into your film a soft um, the idea that like technology like while it can there's this like manufactured closeness or proximity that is there nothing really right. beats being being somewhere in person with another individual yeah. No, completely. Yeah. Well said. I think that's a, that's a good place to end it. Um, we hope that one day we can have 
both of you in person at the Boston Jewish Film Festival or any of our programs in the future. And um, but we thank you so much for uh, joining us today virtually. Um, yeah, uh, thank you to uh, everyone in attendance virtually that uh, uh, sent questions, um, watched these shorts. Um, we hope to see you at. Um, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, happens on zoom it's what what can you do um but um yeah thank you so much for attending um and yeah have a great night everyone um yeah have a good one <laughs> thanks all right bye, bye. thank you <laughs>